are the mysterious world of UX design trends. Now, they don't just waltz in unannounced like a long lost relative at a family reunion. Oh no, they're often ushered in by seismic shifts in business agendas or government policies around the world. For instance, the European Accessibility Act, the EAA, according to the drum, will come into force on June 28, 2025. Accessibility will become a must-have in Europe, prompting companies to invest in their accessibility strategies. And just like that, a new UX trend emerges. Now, on the other side of the globe, Microsoft investing $10 billion into OpenAI, who are the brains behind ChatGPT, has forced other tech companies and giants like Google to also invest in their own AI Bard. to stay competitive. On top of that, hundreds more companies are now leveraging this new technology to supercharge their own products. The result, an AI-driven wave of UX trends, ready to make an impact. Now, these are just two examples of how UX trends are actually formed. So let's go ahead and dive into eight UX trend predictions. AI and conversational UI. I know it's hardly news. With ChatGPT, Midjourney, Dali2, Microsoft's GPT integration, Google's Bard, and more AI models, we've seen AI take the spotlight. But what do these examples all have in common? They all engage with conversational UI. You send prompts and messages and you get back what you want. As we venture into 2023, companies noticing this trend will be eager to follow in big tech's footsteps. No CEO wants to fall behind. Now, I see a huge opportunity to revolutionize traditional marketplaces. So think of companies like TaskRabbit, Airtasker, or even Upwork. Instead of having to fill out outdated forms to find top candidates to serve your needs, why not let job posters simply say, here's what I want, and let the AI magic take over. But here's the caveat. I don't think conversational UI ends with an input field. I see the future of AI interactions as a combination of an input field with some buttons and some toggles to help people refine their search. Just like how Adobe has designed their latest AI release, Firefly. The combination of a simple input field and pre-designed buttons helps everyone refine their results further. Chatbots. Enter Intercom, one of the world's leading customer support platforms, now flaunting AI integration for business users. This savvy AI called Flynn can crawl through a company's entire FAQ and support documentation, providing their customers with immediate solutions without the need of human intervention. The Intercom support widget usually cozied up in the bottom right corner of a website not only references documentation, but it can actually go ahead and rephrase it to offer precise step-by-step -step instructions. Customer support, be aware, you're on the AI hit list for near total replacement. This will be a UX trend that ends an entire sector. 2023 has been a whirlwind year, marked by geopolitical tensions, economic distress, and technological disruption. Many companies are over leveraged, resulting in layoffs and focus on growth. From a UX design perspective, this translates to growth design. And what does that practically mean? Well, one example could be that companies may deprioritize accessibility. Now, I know that's sad, but that is because it doesn't directly generate revenue for the company, especially during a time where companies are in financial distress. Now take a look at this. After acquiring Twitter, Elon Musk disabandoned the accessibility team. Microsoft did the same with their AI ethics team. As companies prioritize growth, UX designers will concentrate on optimizing existing products, focusing on acquisition, activation and retention channels. This means more impactful onboarding experiences, creative ways of upselling, and even ideas to increase average order value, in other words, AOV, or customer lifetime value, in other words, CLV, for various businesses. Now through this, we will see new UX trends forming from new ways of acquiring, activating, and even upselling customers. 
On a different note, accessibility is increasingly becoming a legal mandate in certain parts of the world, as previously mentioned and also discussed in my UI design trends video. Now, the drum reports that the European Accessibility Act, the EAA, will come to force once again on June 28, 2025, introducing new regulations for the accessibility of products and services. Contrary to the US, the UK will specifically be implementing this law, necessitating local businesses to really up their game and invest into accessibility processes. So if you're a UX designer in a country where accessibility is going to become a legal requirement, I would say make sure to check out Figma plugins like Contrast to make sure your color palettes are accessible in your UI designs. Maybe even form a process to validate that your work meets A, AA or AAA grades in terms of accessibility. And maybe even check out websites for all kinds of accessibility resources like a11yproject.com. As we know, many tech companies are trying to reduce costs, but still maintain the same level of output. Now with ChatGPT's API now open for business, companies like Canva, Microsoft, Intercom, and Notion have eagerly integrated their technology into the products. Not to be outdone, Miro launched Miro AI, AKA GPT integration. It's only a matter of time before more design tools follow suit. This real AI revolution hints at automation possibilities across all UX processes. For instance, my practical user research and strategy masterclass student Preston employed ChatGPT to help him synthesize his research findings through my course. Though AI can't really replace the entire research and interview process, it can help synthesize large amounts of data quite quickly. Now, obviously Preston will need to verify the findings, but it's really a start. Automating may also appear in the UI design space. Really nestled under UX design, plugins already exist to automatically create button variants and designers use ChatGPT to write extensive design system documentation. As you can see, automation is on the rise, but human refinement and polishing remain essential. East meets West. Now, tech companies have experienced exponential growth in recent decades. Now, to keep growing, they must provide more value to customers, which translates to more features and larger web applications. Here's where Western apps may adopt an Eastern approach. While Western apps generally and typically emphasize simplified and focused experiences, Eastern super apps like WeChat, which is the Chinese WhatsApp, are feature rich, allowing users to pay, buy groceries and message friends all in one place. I don't really believe Western apps will literally cram everything into one screen and try to do everything, but I do see these larger organizations cross-selling their own services within their own ecosystem. And we're already starting to see this emerge with apps like Uber Eats, encouraging Uber rides and vice versa, all within their very own application. Personalization has been around for a while with Netflix show recommendations, with Instagram's customized feeds and YouTube's video suggestions. Apple actually upped the ante on March 15th by introducing shop with a specialist over video. Now connecting US customers with an Apple specialist for personalized iPhone shopping experiences. With 2023's challenges, customer retention and prioritization are crucial. So I think expect more companies to enhance the personalization within their products and also their services. Employment landscape. As we're all aware, the global economy is currently on really shaky grounds. High interest rates, over leveraged tech companies and soaring debt ceilings for the world's largest economy all contribute to this instability. Americans can rest assured that our banking system is safe. Silicon Valley Bank has collapsed. If we hadn't been driving our economy with easy money and then trying to really quickly undo that, we wouldn't be having these problems now. As a result, 
Many tech companies employing UX designers are really prioritizing capital preservation, or in other words, spending money wisely. This focus will tighten hiring budgets, really affecting UX designers' chances of securing new roles. And additionally, the emergence of AI tools will have a significant impact on the UX design realm. While I don't believe AI will entirely replace our field, as it will work alongside existing teams. However, since AI will be enhancing team productivity and efficiency, design teams will likely need fewer UX designers. Put simply, if you needed 10 designers before, you probably only need five designers now. However, this might not be the end because I genuinely believe new opportunities will arise from this historical event in the tech world. New companies will be formed, new ideas would now be possible, and all these new companies and ideas will need designers. Education. This brings me to my final point. Is UX design even worth pursuing and where should I begin? In an earlier video discussing AI replacing UX designers, I noted that AI will automate much of the designers grunt and monotonous work, but won't fully replace us, especially regarding strategic skill sets. Because I do think that humans will always be working alongside AI and technically not just replaced entirely is design system. I also watched a really interesting interview between Lex Friedman and Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, where Sam made a pretty interesting remark. If an AI can beat a human at chess, then no one's going to bother to keep playing, right? Because like, what's the purpose of us or whatever? That was 30 years ago, 25 years ago, something like that. I believe that chess has never been more popular than it is right now. I wholeheartedly agree with this statement. While AI can be highly productive and efficient, there will always be a place for humans to really flourish. I genuinely believe that if you're drawn to this field or eager to level up, now is the time. Because every day you hesitate is another day someone else will advance and technological developments will just make it more difficult and increasingly more difficult and challenging for you to enter. So where can you start acquiring a practical, real-world education without breaking the bank or spending months on a course that leaves you feeling like you've learnt nothing? While self-learning is always an option, it's how I started over 14 years ago, if you're looking for a more structured approach, minimal time wasted searching the internet, and really learning from a reputable source with over a decade of experience condensed into 10 hour courses, I might have just the suggestion for you. Though I may be biased by my own courses, but they are backed by over 8,000 students. What I love most about the course is how it pretty much covers everything. When you finish it, you are ready to start working right away. I feel much more confident and know where to start and how to conduct user research more effectively. It's really perfect and awesome course. Even if you're you know, already experienced or if you're just starting out, I'd highly recommend both of these courses. The course is full of real world examples. The videos are focused, straight to the point. This optimizes everyone's time. I teach these courses through the lens of a UX designer and a former agency owner who generated over $7 million in UX design work. Currently, I have two courses available, Figma Masterclass and Practical User Research and Strategy with quite a few more coming. I've taken everything I've learned and packaged it into high value courses, allowing you to acquire practically all my knowledge and experiences in just a couple of hours. Now, if you wanna learn more, you should definitely check out the links in the description. So once again, guys, in a nutshell, our eight UX design trends in 2023 are AI and conversational UI, chatbots, growth design, accessibility, automation in UX processes, East meets West, personalization, and really the employment landscape. And that's a wrap for this video, guys. If you like this video, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the diehard fans, and make sure if you wanna learn more, you should definitely check out this video.